Hey, this time we're going to be talking about this little guy for you bass players out there. So, once again, I'm Alex Grimm, and welcome to my internet. So this bad boy is the Ampeg SCR-DI, which is a combination DI box and overdrive, uh, particularly designed for bass. I suspect it would work on guitar too. I haven't tried that. Um, if that ends up being real cool, I might make another video about it. But maybe not. So this is two pedals in one. You got the clicky, you got the clicky, you got the clicky, you got the clicky, 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 clicky. So we've got the DI side and the Scrambler side, and the Scrambler is, I believe, based off of an old Ampeg overdrive. Um, DI side is a DI box, and it's got, you know, standard, like, SVT-style controls, you know, volume, bass, mid, treble, ultra-low, ultra-high. Um, then there's this aux knob, so you can plug your, you know, iPod or whatever into the side here. And that just blends that signal in. And then on this side, the business end, you've got a ground lift for your uh, XLR out. And you've got your line out and you got your headphone out. And one of the important things here is that the line out is 15 dB quieter than the XLR out, which ends up being really important because the kind of the only there are only two bad things I can think of about this box so far is one, the knobs are a little I feel like eh, they're fine. They don't feel as tight as I'd like. And two, the output on this thing is ridiculous. I plugged it into my little mobile pre box over here, and I've got to have the gain like almost at zero, which um, is kind of a pain in the ass. Especially if you, you know, if you get to the higher volume settings, it just really, really cranks. Which, on one hand, you know that is sort of an SVT thing. They are known for being hellaciously loud. But on the other hand, you know, this is a DI box. It'd be nice to you know, maybe even have like a level, you know, after all the circuitry where you can just kind of say like, you know, look, I'd need to be able to drive this console or whatever without blowing it up. Um, so there's that because the cool thing, you know, the volume knob really you can, you know, it changes the tone. It's not just the, you know, it's not just output. It, you know, like a real amp, you know, it does stuff. But yeah, um, so it's built like a tank. This weighs, I don't know, it feels like three or four pounds. You know, it's all metal. The Ampeg logo is like nice and chunky, which I think is cool. Um, it's really forgiving with power supplies. Anything over 100 milliamps and between 9 and 12 volts. So you know, pretty much any old pedal supply you have lying around will do the trick. Yeah, the uh, low and high switches, um, you know, they do they really scoop it. The one thing I'll say that I didn't always like was that when you really get the bass going up, you know, either with the ultra low switch or the, just the you know, regular EQ knob, the whole thing seems to compress, which is great for like playing slap stuff. It's great for that, but it's not not always what you want to do. No, it's just one of those little things. You know, maybe you have like an EQ pedal, you can get that other bass heavy sound without getting the compression. The other kind of sometimes frustrating, sometimes useful thing is. The, um, the scrambler side here, um, if you have the bass really cranking on the DI side, and you go over and you engage the scrambler, especially in some of the higher drive settings, it actually rolls off and tightens up the bass, which is cool for some stuff. Um, you know, if you want to like, have a tighter overdrive sound, or you want to take a you know a solo or something, it kind of cleans up the low end. But sometimes you just want like that big, fat, nasty fuzz, and you just can't quite get it. Um, it sounds good, but it just doesn't have. It's not like Death by Audio Fuzz War or something. Yeah, you know, it's just massive, huge, nasty fuzz, and you can't quite get that. Which you know, it's not a fuzz pedal, but the um, the ability to engage that even you know, even at moderate settings and kind of use it as a low cut is actually really handy for a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna shut up now. I'm talking too long and. Show you two things, you know, first, just a quick overview of all the controls, what they do. 
that's not that exciting, but it's kind of, you know, useful. If you like that, you can watch it. You can skip ahead a little bit. I'm going to show you, I think it's seven or eight tones that I pulled out of this that I liked. So now we're going to go to the scrambler side of things. Things. So you turn it on. Um, so you, I've got the blend all the way up just to hear it better, but you can roll that back and so that's just a wet dry knob essentially. Um, and you can take the drive all the way from nothing or just about nothing, I guess. There's a little bit in there. All the way up to, you know. You can get real silly with it. And, you know, all points in between. There's a nice kind of growl setting if you sort of roll them both back a little bit. Um, but the cool thing, if you're not using this as a DI, for example, if this was on your pedal board and like at band practice, you ran this as your amp and into like a board, but then it shows you wanted to you know, run through an actual amp, but you still like the uh, sound of the scrambler, you can actually use it independently of the um, DI. So let's see. So here's the dry signal. Can, you know, and then it works. It's a little easier to hear if I do that. So then this is just the scrambler. So that's pretty cool.
Uh, but that's it.